Hello YouTube, thought I'd do a quick video here. I was talking with some of the people in my Zello channel the other day and we were discussing is it cheaper to build a beam antenna or also called a directional antenna or is it cheaper just to buy one? Now of course what I recommend doing is in this particular case is take a piece of paper if you have the materials on hand or if you have to buy the materials write it down and see how much it's going to cost you to buy the materials and if you have the tools to build this um, it, whether you're going to use aluminum whether you're going to use brass like I said go to your hardware store take a piece of paper jot all the information down kind of you know kind of guesstimate your time in this um, there's a lot of websites out there that tell you how to build one. Matter of fact, I found some really cool software that you have to download and install on a computer. Um, I'll post a link to that software in the description below. It's it, it's really good software. It, you type in the frequency. It tells you the length. It tells you how much gain that antenna is going to have. It tells you... It asks you what type of coax you're going to use. It asks you if you're using, I believe it, I believe it also asks you, are you going to use square tubing? Are you going to use round tubing? It asks you all these questions. But I'll, it's free software. I'll post a link to that. Like I said, you have to download it and install it. Like I said, I'll post a link down below. So, so like I said, take a piece of paper, take it with you to the hardware store, add it up. Because as you can see here, if you go to if you go to Amazon and you type in either beam beam uh, UHF antenna or uh, beam GMRS antenna or a Yagi antenna or what however word you want to use, you can see here some of the prices thirty eight dollars. You know, of course, there's going to be you know different types of antennas, and I'll explain here a little bit the difference, but $38, $70, I mean, you know, so keep that in mind when you go and price out your materials. Now, if you're wondering what a beam antenna is, let's go ahead and let's pick this one. And we're going to pick this picture. And we're going to explain what a beam antenna is. A beam antenna or a directional is just like the word says, directional, meaning all of your signal is going to go one direction. In this case, think of it as like an arrow. And let me get my fancy marker. The shorter element is the front side of this. So think of this as an arrow. Okay? So when you mount this, whichever way you have this, the short element facing, that's where the strongest transmission or transmission power is going to go whether that's you know south or west or whatever direction you point that to that's where you're going to get the most power the best receive in that direction you you'll get some on the back side as they say they call this the back side you'll get some this way but it won't be as good as the front side okay now you're probably asking yourself well why would I need an antenna like this well let me give you an example let's say you're 20 miles away from a GMRS to a radio repeater and you have a, uh, a base station set up at home and you have a Omni let me show you that antenna an Omni antenna is an antenna that you normally see get my fancy pen here it's like a just a straight pole like that it's got ground plane rods the signal here is going to should be fairly equal all the way around the antenna it's not directional so let's say you have one of these antennas on your roof right now and you want to hit a GM on repeater you're not hitting it with this antenna and so you know what direction that repeater is at so then what you do is you'd buy a directional or beam antenna and you would point this towards the direction of that repeater 
and you'll probably be able to hit it. So that's the purpose of one of the purposes of having a beam or directional antenna. Okay? It's for situations like that. Um, some people use them for fox hunting. Uh, fox hunting is uh, a person hides a little transmitter and a group of people try to find where it's at. So they'll have a handheld type of a beam antenna and they'll use a handheld radio and they try to, you know, locate, you know, which direction do I go to find this little transmitter. Um, so that's what fox hunting kind of entails. So a lot of people use that for this. Now, so uh, th those are a uh, good situations where you're going to want a beam antenna. Now, here's the thing I want to make that's very important that you that you realize. Some of these antennas are marked. Let me back out of here. Let me get my fancy little pen here. And let's find one right here. Matter of fact, here's one that's 11 dBi gain for $70. I mean, that's not bad. Here's another one. This one is 7 dBi for 40 bucks. Now, the nice thing about Amazon, you can... You can buy this, and if you put it up and you don't like it, if it's within 30 days, you can send it back. No harm, no foul. So that's what's nice about Amazon. So keep that in mind. The other thing you want to keep in mind is these antennas, how they're labeled. And what I mean by that is, as you can see here, this one's labeled DBI. Okay? Some antennas are marked some antennas will say like for an example 11 dbd okay so there is a conversion formula it's real simple but you want to convert it so that you are comparing apples to apples like for an example let's say i want to compare this antenna this is a dbi so let's say i want to compare this antenna to a 11 dbd antenna okay well they're two different they're, they're two different um uh measurements so we got to convert one of them to the other so that we can have we can compare apples to apples and how to do that is and i will post this link in the description below it's real simple there's a, a web page right here and I just scrolled to the main important part. But to convert, let me get my pen, to convert DBD to DBI, you add 2.14. To convert DBI to D, D, <laughs> DBD, you subtract 2.14. So you want to make sure when you pick these antennas, you are aware of that. So you may have to convert one to match the other one so that you know what the figures are. Okay, I'll post this link to this website in the description below so you can bookmark it and have it for reference. But so keep that in mind So um, when you do this. And that applies with any, uh, don't have to be a beam antenna, but... You know any type of DBI you can convert it to either way now also to be careful like here this is this is a GMRS it, it even says GMRS it says for uh, you know amateur radio it tells you the frequency so make sure you you pick one you don't pick a um, like a TV antenna or something like that so make sure it, it tells you the frequency on it and that it's meant for you know, uh, uh, GMRS, like in this particular case, it does tell you the frequency, so this one would work. So that's one thing you want to be aware of. The other thing you want to be aware of, let's go ahead, let's pick one here. Let's pick this one right here, this one for $70. Let's pick this one. You want to look at the specs and to make sure that you're aware of the size of the antenna, how much does it weigh, so how much wind it can handle, so here is, let me get my little pen, like right here. This one tells you the wind rating. Um, here 
is the size of it. You may have to convert it from millimeters to inches. How much does it weigh? That's another thing you want to know because if you already have a pole up, you want to make sure you have enough room. You want to make sure that your pole is can handle this because um, this is going to be kind of a, a longer, as you can see, there's going to be a little bit of more of a weight to it compared to, to the other antenna. But uh, how much does it weigh? Again, you may have to convert that to pounds. Um, make sure the frequency range is correct if you're talking GMRS uh, two-way radios. Uh, how many watts? So that if even though it's 100 watt, and you're thinking, well, I'll never you know do 100 watt. But let's say you have a 30 watt uh, base station. And down the road, you decide to bump up to 50 watt. You want to make sure that antenna can handle it so you're not buying another antenna. So just keep those uh, in mind. Those are important details to, to, to be aware of. So, um, but as you can see here, the pricing is not as bad. I mean, 70, 70 bucks for 11 DBI. Um, we got one for $38. Obviously, it's going to be a smaller antenna. Um, this one's uh, 7 DBI, so it's not as much, you know, not as many uh, DBI. So it's going to be smaller. Um, there's a, oh, here's another one here. This is a 5 element. This is a 9 for, for 50 bucks. Like I said, it's Amazon. You can only send it back if you don't like it. Here's one that's 8. Um, Eight element, high gain. I don't know what it means. Okay, here's the only guy. Be you know. Okay, high gain. What does that mean? How, how many DBI is it? So let's let's see the specs tell me. The specs don't tell me. Well, I'm not going to spend a hundred dollars on something I don't know. So let's go down the specs and see if it tells me how many DBI. It says high gain. Okay, right here. Nine point five. To 11.5. Now you're probably saying, why is there a difference? Because this one can do different frequencies. So that's another thing too that you kind of be. If you're going to use this on uh, 136 to 147 megahertz, well, it looks like that's going to be about a 9.5 dBi gain. If you're going to use this on the GMR frequency, which is 400 to 470, that's going to be 11.5 dBi gain. So kind of you know be mindful of that too. So Make sure you know what the gain is. If antenna does not tell you a gain, I would not would not buy it. Um, unless it's got really great reviews. But even then, though, you kind of like to have a number. Um, so there's one here for 100 bucks. So, again, so many prices. Depends on what you're looking for. Depends on how big you want it. If you're going to put it in your attic. If you're going to have it outside. So, a lot of things to consider when you're looking for a beam slash directional antenna so and like I said I just typed in uh, you can type this in a uh, Yagi UHF antennas you can type in uh, a GMRS beam antenna or directional you can even type th those terms in too for that matter you can type this into your search directional uh, GMRS antenna and you'll get a whole bunch of, of different uh, ones to choose from so like I said I, you know um, I hope this information will help you uh, in deciding on whether you want to build one, buy one, and it kind of get a little bit of a detail of how these antennas, what's the difference between them. So if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below and please subscribe. Thank you and have a good day.